I just have a, a couple of other questions. It's really interesting what you're saying about Gaelic games being at a relatively low ebb around that period because I'm well aware of the Hefo's army transforming Gaelic games in Dublin, but I hadn't realised it was a countrywide problem. Like, how how deep did that go or, or how big was the threat in areas outside of Dublin around that period? Well, uh, when the ban was lifted, there were junior soccer clubs opened everywhere around the country, including in my own parish. And I played soccer for a couple of years um, and might have even presumed at the time, this is the game I will play. And then I, I began to get back into the Gaelic football again. But it became, for want of a better term, legal or acceptable to form soccer clubs uh, alongside the local GEA clubs. And it, it was a more popular game. You know, you had Arsenal and Liverpool and Man United, Brazil, soccer more so than rugby, uh, soccer was very much on the up and Gaelic football, it just didn't have the glamour, it just right. didn't. But Dublin arrived on the scene, they changed the style of the jerseys, it became super fit. Uh, you know, I, I can remember reading a report of Kildare in 1971, they were absolutely over the moon because they had 19 players at every training session. Now, <laughs> if you had 19 players at every training session now, uh, you would be going nowhere <laughs> <laughs> it's i presume as well from your perspective it's impossible to divorce the past with the present and you're two good leinster men and uh, looking at the situation in leinster football at the moment uh certainly from my perspective i presume it's a historically grim situation any nuggets in this book at all that would say actually it, it used to be just as bad where, where, where dublin or at least one team were were as dominant or or really, when you go through every single detail in history, the situation in, in your own province right now, Gaelic football-wise, at inter-county level, is, is, is historically bad. You'd have to go back a long way to see uh, the level of dominance in Leinster, sure. but I'm glad you've given me the opportunity <laughs> to say that Kildare were unbeatable between 1926 and 1932 in Leinster. <laughs> but by and large, it was Mead and Offaly, you know, in my childhood in the... 60s, 70s, until Dublin arrived on the scene. But what we have at the moment is without precedent. Uh, I don't think it will last forever, because nothing lasts forever. But they're certainly at a different pitch in terms of how they're organised and in terms of how they approach the whole thing. And, uh, you know, to be fair, lots of people said, you know, they have the money machine and they have this, that and the other. Uh, it helps but you've got to have talent and Dublin have had that in abundance and intelligence and commitment and you can't take that from them. It's not all down to money. 